Hi everyone, my name is Emily and this week we're working on Lewis dot structures and also determining molecular geometry and electron domain geometry. Uh, in this case we're working with sulfur tetrafluoride, which is SF4. Remember the prefix tetra means four, so we have four fluorines in our structure. To the Lewis dot structure, let's go ahead and determine how many valence electrons we have to have in our structure. Sulfur has six valence electrons, and each fluorine uh, has seven, and we have four of them, so there's 20 valence electrons right there, plus the six from sulfur, that'll give us 34 valence electrons in our Lewis dot structure. So sulfur is going to be our central atom. We have our fluorines. So far we have eight electrons from the bonds. Um, we're going to go ahead and give everything a full octet. So we have four fluorines, each with six valence electrons. That gives us 32. And the other two electrons go on our central atom, which is sulfur. Remember, sulfur, because it's in the third uh, uh, row of the periodic table, it can have more than an octet. And the rule goes that all the atoms on the third or the third row or below can have a hyperoctet, can have hypervalence, can have more than eight electrons in their uh, valence shell. And sulfur is one of them. Now let's determine the molecular geometry and the electron domain geometry. Let's start with electron domain geometry. And when it comes to determining electron domain geometry, we're going to look at all of our electron clouds, electron domains. Each one of these bonds is a domain. And remember, when it comes to electron domain geometry, we also include um, our lone pair. In this case, we have one, two, three, four, and five uh, electron domains. So this is going to actually give us a trigonal bipyramidal electron domain geometry. When we look at molecular geometry, we don't consider the lone pairs. They do have an effect on the overall shape, so don't forget that, but we don't consider, the, the molecular geometry is no longer trigonal bipyramidal, because if you were to just visualize the bonds and the atoms that are around this, around our central atom, um, we wouldn't actually see the the lone pair, so that, that's not going to affect our, um, it's not going to determine our molecular geometry um, in the fact that it's not going to be trigonal or bipyramidal, but keep in mind it does, it does determine what shape we have. And in this case, the sh shape that we're going to have is a seesaw. So this is our um, molecular geometry. And let me go ahead and redraw this to show you why that is. So if you look at um, SF4, uh, keep in mind that these electron domains are repelling one another. And lone pairs are also repelling the other electron domains, and they repel them even more. So what happens is these domains are going to spread out such that they're, they're as far apart from each other as possible because they're repelling. So what that results in is a shape this, and we're going to say this dark wedge is coming out of the page, so if I was to draw this in 3D, and the, wet, the dash is going to be um, into the page. And this is the space that the lone pair occupies. So if you were to imagine this in 3D, it looks like a seesaw, So which is why we call it, um, we give it the uh, name of seesaw, molecular geometry. So once again, we had a trigonal bipyramidal electron domain geometry because we had five domains. But when it came to, came to determining our molecular geometry, uh, 
the shape was a seesaw because of that lone pair. Now if there was another bond here and there was no lone pair, uh, the molecular uh, geometry will also be, would have also been um, trigonal by her angle. I hope this video made sense. If it doesn't, please do come to Office Hours and Academic Excellence Workshop. And I hope to see you there.